Thank you so much for this kind presentation. Uh, uh, this is joint work with uh, um, Wasim Dawadi, who is from ETH Zurich, and Kamel Jalidi, who is a professor here at Columbia, and uh, MPG student from marketing department. So let's get started. Um, so our work deals with issues uh, and decision problems which can be cast in the framework of ranking. So to give you a very simple example, uh, it's the admission problem. Consider a business school uh, that would like to admit uh, students. And uh, for simplicity, consider that it received just six applications and it wants to admit, and it can only admit four people. So the top objective for the business school here in this simplified example is to maximize GMAT score. So it wants to maximize the average or total GMAT score across the admits. Um, however, it has a requirement. It has a diversity score constraint. It wants to ensure that the total diversity score of admitted uh, students is at least three. And if you look at this current uh, allocation, if you just admit people, top four people by GMAT, this constraint will be violated because here diversity, a total diversity constraint is just two. So how could we correct this situation? Um, well, a simple way would be to admit person five instead of person four in the ranking. This way we can see that the total diversity constraint is satisfied in the top four admits. And we can satisfy this constraint by uh, minimally losing out on our primary objective, which is the GMAT score. Of course, this is a simplified example. And uh, here we could just solve it by looking at these numbers and uh, figuring out the solution. Uh, in real life situations, uh, this problem can be much more complicated when you have many more constraints and much more complicated setups. Furthermore, you may have to solve it very fast. Uh, another thing I would like, would like to highlight here is that whenever you have a primary objective and a constraint, in all other than the most trivial cases, there is an inherent trade-off in tension. So our work looks at this tension and the issues it may cause, and also at how can we solve such types of problems really fast uh, on real life scale. So to motivate this, I think uh, I will bring up two issues that partly are in the news. So one is the recent legal action against uh, universities like Harvard and Yale, accusing universities of penalizing some of the racial groups in their admission process. For example, when it comes to Asian Americans in particular. And uh, the, po the point of this is not like whether they're actually doing this or not, but to highlight that there is some kind of lack of transparency in how these decisions are really made to allow for the rise of suspicion and potential ethical and legal claims against these institutions. So part of our um, work is looking at such issues. Another aspect of the problem actually comes uh, about in very different settings. We can also cast in the framework of ranking such problems as recommending items or content to viewers, be it on Netflix or TikTok or your favorite app. And uh, in these settings, we also observe some consternation with, with how the decisions are made and uh, some concerns about the quality. So for example, here, this is a blog post that uh, highlights issues. Uh, it's from a few years ago, but it highlighted issues with Netflix recommender system. You know, when you as a person of color come for the first time to Netflix, the content used to be mostly white, so it didn't reflect diversity. But after the same time as Netflix acquired information about you and maybe inferred that you may belong to a racial minority, suddenly all your content became focused just on that racial minority, which highlighted lack of diversity. And this is real concern uh, raised by uh, individual viewers. Um, yeah, so motivated by these two examples, we can view two problems that exist right now. First, there seems to be an inherent conflict of interest between the decision makers' primary objective in the settings and the ethical considerations. When there is a lack of transparency, it enables the possibility of little to no accountability. And that creates a potential for legal and ethical challenges. And the second issue is that the existing algorithms proposed for solving such problems tend to be computationally inefficient. And if you want to deploy them on scale of Netflix or TikTok, where you have to uh, provide rankings very fast in real time, then their, uh, their usefulness is limited. So to address these two problems, we propose uh, first, uh, for the first problem, we propose the framework of ethical clearinghouse. In this framework, a decision maker can submit uh, his preferences over considered items or you know, individuals and their description to an independent body. That body can be set up as an oversight board independently inside the company or can be set up on a national level. Um, that board accepting these preferences 
and also using established fairness and diversity constraints, for example, as provided by the government or public opinion or some interinstitutional organizations, can clean, can modify this ranking so that it becomes compliant with such ethical constraints and return this clean ranking to the decision maker. Furthermore, uh, it can add essentially a certificate of ethicality and legality if a decision maker uses this recommended ranking in the decision making, then it's like a reputation shield. It's uh, under some assumptions, it can be immunity against legal and ethical claims. Furthermore, there can be useful information extracted like shadow price information for constraint violation to inform policy debate around, for example, the Guvian uh, taxes or subsidies to uh, encourage compliance we also, I will not cover this slide in too much detail, but we also propose a scalable algorithm for resolving such uh, ranking under constraints problems fast uh, using statistical sampling. So we experiment with a few data sets, um, with movies, so I'll skip this for now. And we always today different trade-offs. Essentially what we see when we experiment with all this algorithm is that there is an inherent trade-off between the computation time, the ability to comply with ethical constraints and ability to maximize the decision maker's objective. And we elucidate how different methods, uh, can, which methods are most essentially Pareto optimal. So here are a few things cool about this project, but I'll stop here. Thank you so much for your attention. So Yagor, I, you have a couple of questions in the chat box, um, specifically related to the diversity score. So the first question is, what does a diversity score of one or two mean? So I think that uh, goes back to your uh, first slide. And then the second question is, could a diversity score also be relative to the admitted pool or the pool of existing students instead of absolute? Yes, so um, thank you very much for the question. Um, so for, for diversity score, you know, our framework is agnostic to specific criteria that you want to use in terms of ethics. It can be anything, you know, wh whichever, you know, whichever diversity type you care about, it's up to you to determine it. So it's completely flexible that way. We don't really are not trying to impose a particular view of ethics. Um, could be relative to the admitted pool or pool of existing students. That's it. Yes, I think uh, basically this framework allows to accommodate to flexible fairness constraints. And I think, yeah, a variety of them can be accommodated. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then why or why not admit the 710 candidate over the 730 candidate? Uh, I, I will need to take a look at that again, but I believe the main issue is the amount of loss in GMAT because we want to satisfy our ethical constraint while minimally losing out on GMAT score. And I think the solution that I have there allows for that. And then it also can be non-unique in some cases, so it's another possibility. Perfect. And then one last question. Uh, how is the ethical integrity of the clearinghouse, how can that be guaranteed? And what measures would be in place to prevent them to become subject to the same ethical ranking constraints? Yes, I think the main recipe should be complete transparency. You know, we already have experience with such institutions. For example, we have IRB board inside universities. You know, Facebook recently set up an oversight board with uh, mixed success, maybe. There are also, uh, for example, for medical residences or systems that match uh, students to schools. So we have experience and I think the uh, practice has proven that these institutions can operate well. 